turn this railroad spike into this railroad spike. So if you happen to get crooked or something, it's not going to want to snap. I'll show you the difference. Here's a used wheel. This is a straight, flat wheel. You can probably snap it in one hand. Yeah. Here's another one. Here's a small depressed center. Definitely can't do it. Um, so yeah. To me, in my mind, that's all I need to know that I'm buying a depressed center wheel every time. There might be a time where you need that straight wheel, but for what we're doing, you don't need it. And the off chance that you get a little crooked and bind, that straight wheel is going to explode, where this is just going to sort of splinter the edge. So, depressed center wheel, and at the end we're going to use a hard disk to cut our notch for the bottle. Um, then I come back and sort of plane it flat with a flapper disc, and for that I just use a really old used flapper disc because it kind of helps get in there better. So, and then obviously an angle grinder guard if um, if that's your style. I know some guys do this with a chisel. Um, I'm impressed. I happen to have this cut off other section of spike. And I just put it in the center and sort of use it to trace real rough. That's all you need. A line there. Get it going around. It's not the best. It's fine. The whole purpose of that is so when I'm cutting these down, I just end at the same point every time. So I try and end at that line, try and go from line to line on the vertical. Um, I know some guys will draw out a center line. I don't really worry about that. If it's off center, I found that it just is more unique. That's, that's my prep, just like that. Now, as far as depth, and how deep you make these cuts, that's um, gonna be more of your, I guess, creative artistic freedom. Um, however, the deeper you make them, the higher chance you have of snapping uh, the spike when you twist it, obviously, because you're getting less um, parent material there in the center. I brace my hand against the vise, put this hand on here, you know, and then lock this arm against my body, so pretty much, Everything is very sturdy. You're not going to be boom, 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 bouncing around. You're going to, you're going to lock in like a very strong, powerful human radial arm cutting machine.
All right, so we got our vertical and horizontal lines. Um, next thing I like to do is I run it through the wire wheel and the bench grinder. It just sort of cleans up any of the little any little burrs where the lines might have been connecting. Um, we already went through the cutoff wheel and chased back through the vertical lines to help clean up the burrs from where all the cube notches cut in. Um, and then yeah. Alright, that's pretty good. Pretty bright orange. I would call that a good twisting temperature. Alright, well I guess, I guess the next step of something I forgot is the, uh, the twisting tool. You can use anything. You can literally um, first piece of scrap steel I found. But you can take the chunk of Weld them like that, that way, if your other one's in the vise, you can go up against it and lock it and twist it, you know, super easy to make your own twisting tool. Or, a lot of people will use, you know, a wrench or a pipe wrench. One thing with that I found is your, all your leverage is on one side, so to me that tends to make the twist not stay totally straight, it tends to get it to sort of rock out of the way. Not everyone has a cool fancy tool like this. Um, this was, I believe, plasma cut. It was given to me by another blacksmith. But basically, uh, this is 5 eighths, which meant your typical railroad spike. And then you got a half inch notch, 3 eighths, and a quarter. I've only ever used a 5 eighths. Um, and then I welded on some railroad spikes to get extra leverage. Um, you can solve your leverage problems simply by twisting when the spike is hotter. Next step, let's go. Another basic thing, I always just, you know, approach the device with the spike exactly how you want it. I always put it head facing that way. I clamp it where just the last little straight bits and those cuts are pretty much flush with the top of the device. And then, then we let it rip. But, um, I'm going to throw it back in just so I can pull it straight in, put it in, and go straight to twisting. Because even that little bit of time talking, um, it loses some heat. And also I want to set the camera up for a better shot than the twist. So, so everything you're seeing I've done like three, four, five times. So just to get the shots and I'm going to melt down in between. So don't worry about it guys.
six twist bottle of that. Oh yeah. Thank <laughs> you.